Sprichst du? Sprichst du in Jörde? Sprichst du in Likamann? Sprichst du in Fjandmann? Rishtu mini i mig. Woo! Remember Emerald Kaizo? Oh, how that game took the world by storm. Pokemon challenges, Gian, and so many more tried their hand at beating what was once considered the hardest game in the market. One of those Nuzlockers in the thick of things was Dexa, who mastered the Slowbro stall strategies for the Elite Four to defeat the game. This same creator would go on to defeat the esteemed Radical Red Hardcore Nuzlocke, Deathless. With this deadly duo conquered, he sought to create an incredibly difficult game that rivaled the challenge and fun of these two insane Nuzlocks. And boy, did he do that. This is Pokemon Run and Bun. The game opens up in Little Root Town and starts just as Pokemon Emerald does, except there's a little baby pond here in the starter town for little babies. I picked Piplup, obviously. Not because it was the best, but because it was the worst. This is a protest. I might not be good at protests. May gets to keep her Hoenn starter in this game, rocking with Trico before we were finally able to get our early game Pokemon. Bunnelby as our first pickup was okay, and we picked up Wish.com Mudkip, which felt good. We then snagged Growlithe and Lotad. Our encounters were pretty respectable. All of these guys looked like they had different roles and niches, Although I was definitely worried about none of these Pokemon being particularly useful early game. Petalburg City and Route 102 gifted us Krogonk and Pidgey respectively. Our final encounter before real battles was brutal. No Big P or Big B, nerd bug. And when I say real battles, I just mean this is where reading the docs becomes necessary. Krabby, Klabo, and Yanma aren't hard to beat, but if you don't have your Oran Berries equipped, Sonic Boom will bury a whole team in just moments. The double Magikarp trainer after this is far less of a test. Bounce Magikarp is a meme and honestly able to be stalled out. Hydro Pump Magikarp is also whack, but Piplup and Lotad wall this guy easy. Lady Cindy is next, and she's just a luck check. Of course, Cherry Berries help manage flinch problems, but infatuation is a deadly curse that our team had to overcome. And infatuation in this game has been edited to affect Pokemon regardless of gender, which is a huge dub, but also love is the enemy here, and my Pidgey can't move! Shout out to Krogonk, who acts as a Swiss army knife throughout this entire run. Fake out Vacuum Wave on Mincino and Carvana paved a perfect path for deathless battles against Cindy and the Forest Grunt. Also, Nerdbug obliterated the Execute and Krogunk on that same grunt, which I thought was wild. Now, there are many moments where the story is edited and run a bun to reroute the player through different storylines. Old Man Sailor Guy takes us boating immediately in this universe and traps us on Duford Island until we meet Steven. Three encounters join the team, Toodle, Tyrogue, and Remoraid. Toodle was great, a future rock type and a cute little guy. Remoraid was dog shit, but that's what a Remoraid's for. And Tyrogue should have been great, except it was a modest nature and one speed. Minus attack, one speed, Lee! We did add some evolutions that actually helped, however, including Dotler, Pidgeotto, Primplup, Palpitoad, and Lombre. Now, we're getting to the part of the game where it's just constant mini boss battles. Some of them are hard, others are not. Probably more important to note, before we left Duford, I delayed the Granite Cave encounter. The dream is to pull a Static Mon from a future route and to hit the Togedemaru on the first floor. So, to future routes we go. What's funny here is that this beach is where I first learned of Dex's map making strategies. Littered throughout the sand are trainers under these umbrellas that lurk and pounce on you like evil cats. OP Blue Lobster, welcome to the team. Now, obviously I am aware that this is how Dex is schemed, so I took the safe route and talked to every trainer I wanted to battle very deliberately, but some of these battles can turn into scary double battles if you're not cautious. Meticulously, we conquered the beach like Ken and fished up a quillfish in Slateport. A max attack intimidate user was super welcomed on my squad any day. Slateport is the home of unlimited secret powers and hidden powers, and this museum back-to-back -back battle that isn't that hard, but serves as maybe the most difficult battle up to this point. Fortunately, Quillfish was benefiting from single stage syndrome here and simply outclassed every babymon it had to deal with. 
Our new cap of 21 brought some fruitful evolutions in Diggersby and Hitmonlee. Minus Hitmonlee. Minus attack one speed. Gavi was our next little pit stop, protecting an encounter and a rare candy with his pretty solid team of five. This team is really tough at a 17 level cap and really, really easy at level 21. Get bopped, guy. Anyways, you're probably wondering why I'm mentioning getting rare candies, as the level caps here are hard, so we don't gain experience in battles, and I have a tool called Endless Candies in my bag. Part of the strategy of this game is that you're able to exceed the level cap at any given point in time for just one or two levels in order to learn new moves, evolve, or whatever else. It's really interesting and creates a whole new set of options for any given fight. We got a Yamper here, who did not have the ability static. I named the pup Moxie, and Moxie was trash. And as Moxie did not have static, we had a very low chance of picking up Togedemaru in Granite Cave. Instead, we slotted Donphan, who I feel is always known for being a solid Nuzlocke Pokemon. This one was pretty okay, and I named it after Captain Kid. Powering through Brawly Trainers was fine. Honestly, none of the battles leading up to the leader were particularly interesting, as we prepared well for each one. Brawly, however, was known for being a hard encounter check. And there are two Pokemon on Brawly's team that I think provoke the most fear in the hearts of battlers heading in. The first to me is Combuskin, whose attacks and coverage is incredibly difficult to deal with. Never mind the fact that speed boost means you're always dealing with two hits from it, one on the switch in and one on the next turn, before you even have a chance to hit it back. The next has to be Hitmontop, who I've never seen a hard check to. Technician this early is just broken and Pursuit is so damaging as the AI is guaranteed to use it if it sees a kill. If you think I'm sleeping on Power Up Punch, Eviolite Scraggy, or Retaliate, Drain Punch, Lopany, I promise I'm not. These are somehow the less threatening attacks. I stalled out Sucker Punches from Cub Fu by setting up Reflex and Light Screens with Dottler endlessly until I was finally able to hit it with Psybeam without risking crit death. Combuskin came in next and threatened to punish our Palpitoad. On the brink of dying to a crit from Double Kick, I pivoted to Quilfish to drop the attack of Combuskin and back to Palpitoad on Thunder Punch. While it looks like I'm in the same situation I was in, Combuskin would now have to double crit to clear Palpitoad. In other words, this quick pivot turned a 6% death chance, which is pretty high, into a 0.39% chance, and we had to take it. Lopany rolled in next, which I was hoping would use Retaliate. It did not do that, but it's okay. I switched back to Quillfish on Drain Punch to get an Intimidate off, and I risked the Headbutt Flinch to get the Revenge kill. Honestly, I was super surprised Quillfish cleared here. Lombre just beat Polywhirl, and the demon was in. Hitmontop, the assassin of all things good. I'm out of pursuit range. Oh, it did it anyways! That's so... I survived! Okay. What the fuck? Yeah, so Pursuit does not get a Technician boost when Pokemon switch out, which is hilarious. Lombre is a god. Hitmonlee smacked the final Scraggy and the battle was over. Passed Brawly with zero deaths. This run was looking up. Our new level cap was 25 and we picked up a Shroomish in Petalburg Forest. On our way to Rustboro, there was a spooky little double battle, but Breloom and Dottler held things down for the squad and route to three new friends. First, introducing Hamilton. Hamilton is a trade Pokemon in this game that comes with three perfect IVs. All you have to do is send over your Cantonian puppy for the Legends one. It was a hard goodbye, but absolutely necessary. Next, we added Clampearl and Nidoran to the team. Neither one was particularly cool, but we can pretend that one of those two mods had some value if we want. Now, technically, if I was starving for encounters, I could take the city encounter here, but I wanted the fossil later, so I delayed it. Also, technically, I can beat the route northeast of Rustboro right now, now, it would just be way tougher than if I beat the gym first because of the level cap, but sometimes people do that because it's necessary. This time was not one of those times. Roxanne's gym trainers were easy. Even the worst hit on the imaginable was able to contribute in meaningful ways throughout the three tests. It was time for the big dog. With a slightly improved team from vanilla Pokemon Emerald, you know, with the two Geo dudes and the nose pass, introducing Roxanne's team. Yep, that's Zygarde and Tate and Liza's endgame mods. This was gonna be hard. There's a rock pun in there somewhere. I just, I, I couldn't figure it out. Unsure how this buy sharp made the team, by the way, our one speed Hitmonlee was speed tied and therefore incapable of defeating the mighty swordsman one-on-one. -on -one. Usually Hitmonlee is a guaranteed check. Sick. Instead, Diggersby would do the job, outspeeding and double kicking the beast before Aurorus came in. Of course, I always forget that Refrigerate Body Slam, though Ice type, still has the para chance at 30%. Luckily, we hit through the paralysis and chipped it enough that Diggersby could get back in and finish the job. Lombre beat up Caracosta, Ice Shard one shot Zygarde, and the first of the twins came in. 
Lunatone. Lunatone is just a disaster of a time always. Hypnosis can ruin a team. Icy Wind is great coverage, and one Ancient Power Boost makes Stored Power brutal. The only thing worse than Ancient Power Boost is hitting it for super effective damage somehow, which procs the weakness policy and gives it double speed, double special attack, and double attack. Hitmonlee, ironically, did really well here. It was very quick. The final problem was Solrock, who had us on the brink. I needed Octillery to dodge a flinch. Okay, don't you say- you stomping tantrum? Yes! That's so lucky, dude! I don't even care. I don't- I don't even care. Of course it crit. Why wouldn't it crit? All right, we use Octazuka here. Okay, please don't flinch. 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 If it flinches, we're in trouble. Okay, all right. Hold on. Hold. Okay, that's good. Still not dead. I pivoted to Lombre to launch a fake out and then to Diggersby with plans to quick attack, but would it work? Does it kill from here? It's 10. It's 11%. <laughs> Where's my ruler? I mean, I this is my only play. This is my only play. Hold on, hold on, hold on. If I go to Donphan right now, the shard kill. Shard has a chance to kill. But I would argue a pretty good chance to kill. Depends on how much damage you think that Octazuka did. I'm trusting my gut here, okay? Dude, it is so hard to click the button right now. Deathless Roxanne, dude. Okay, all right. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. Deathless with two badges. This game was easy. Hitmon Trash took over this next route, dominating a couple trainers and priming us for this back-to-back -back single then double battle. The way the characters are set up on this map, we have to take on these two fights with the same team if we want the rare candy available at the bottom. It's kind of genius and absolutely spooky. Still, our new level cap after Roxanne was 32 and these trainers stayed at level 23. Getting some much needed use out of Boltund and Octillery allowed us to push through. We love it when the second stringers get a chance. There are a bunch of little fights after, but what's important is we got our next encounter in the tunnel, Rockruff. Definitely not super useful, and chat was pushing me to save the evolution until after we got the Dusk form available. So delay we would. I mean, we had zero deaths, and who needs to force unnecessary evolutions at this stage of the game? Hiker Mike was the only real obstacle separating Roxanne and Verdant Turf. And with a prepared team, it's not even that tough. He's just sneaky, a sneaky little guy, a guy that does little sneaky things. In Verdant Turf, we got a little muddy dude who was just a ground type tank. Oh, I got Mudbray. Mudbray, Mudbray, Mudbray. The ability tangling hair made the killer defense total super valuable as pivots through could help us get some real speed advantages. And now the game really picks up. Almost everything is fully evolved with real movesets and traps. Shadow tags and arena traps are ready and able to bury your favorite Pokemon, and your Nido Queen's best ground move here is Mud Slap. And the rest of this route was similar, with the introduction of Dark Void Nightmare Hypno keeping me on my toes. And I say introduction, he'll be back later. We fished up a zappy sucky guy in the water. Look at his IVs. No weaknesses on this big boy? Count me in. And now for maybe the most difficult back-to-back -back battles of early game. First, a double battle that buried me a few months ago in the run and bun race that opens with Amolga and Sea King. The gimmick here is that Amolga only has discharge hitting everything on the floor, and the Sea King is a water type with lightning rod. Not only can I not pack ground types on the field because they'll get tossed by the fish with hydro pump, but Sea King is getting stronger every turn it's alive, and my Pokemon are a paralysis risk every single step of the way. I faked out the Amolga turn one and used Rock Slide, dealing real damage to Seeking and smoking the Amolga. I double switched on the Lantern walk-in. The Electric, Breloom, and finally Cloitzer washed these losers en route to the most difficult battle and climax of early game, Shell. Shell is brutal with each and every Pokemon built with real coverage and sitting at a high base stat total. And of course she has Delcaddy, whose learn set is insane given the absence of ghost types and the fact that it has one of the strongest normal type stab moves in the game, that it can spam. And it's faster than everything. My only counter to Lapras was Hitmonlee, which was obviously gonna go well, right? Fake out and a double kick is killer here, right? All right. Almost always kill here. Oh my God. 
That is hilarious. That is the funniest thing ever. Instead, Don Fan would get chipped on a body press pivot, and Dreadnought would need to dodge a sing to get us through. Let's go sing. I'm so screwed. <gasps> okay, bailed. Hamilton bested Togekiss. Rhydon fell to Mega Launcher Crab. Dreadnought held up against Delcaddy until it needed to dodge a crit, of course. Yeah, uh, so we are dead to one roll of non-crit and uh and all rolls of crit, obviously. So here goes nothing. Now we just we just gotta tank this. Just just Dreadnought, you've got it, buddy. Good work. Good job. Good job, that was easy. What's really fun is that this left Dreadnought dead to every single Slowbro move. Fortunately, there was only one move that would punish us on the switch, and lucky for us, we hit it. Whirlpool, our first death, Don Fan. I can't help but feel like that first pivot on body press hurt us, even though it probably didn't, but that would make it Hitmonass's fault instead of my own which I will subscribe to. Now the game opens up quite a bit. North of us is the sand route, which houses a few different viable encounters. East is somewhere we could fish right now, but I already have so many water types that I can just wait for the grass later. And South is a bike route where we'll head just after beating Watson. Beating Watson did mean I had to clear Wally, who carries a super overleveled yet still dog shit Curlia, as well as this poor little guy. And after that, just a few more mini boss battles within the confines of the gym's four walls held us back. Now, of course, these first three battles aren't easy, but we had reasonable answers for all of these mons. No, the problems here start with my greatest weakness in battle number four, double battles. These are easy if I'm trying to let my mons die, but I couldn't afford to let any go here. I had to try and keep all of them alive and clear through the four offensive nightmares. I don't think I've ever seen the plus minus gimmick used in a ROM hack before, so shouts to Deck for creativity. Packing three fake out mons in Toxicroak, Ludi, and Hitmon ass, I anxiously jumped in. My goal was to keep electric terrain off the field. I didn't want rising voltage dominating this fight, never mind plus minus boosted terrain boosted plus ol thunderbolts. Blinded by that, I launched a regrettable fake out with Ludi about four turns in. Oh, this is... I might lose. Oh, great hold! Okay. Oh, after a pivot or two, I needed my team to pass one final test. Nito Queen, can you eat a small little steel beam for me? Uh, I think Kling Clang has the opportunity to kill. Yeah, my steel beam. What's he going for? Nito? Okay. Interesting. Nice survive. Good job. GG's deathless. One total death all the way up to Watson, but with a team of Magnezone, Lantern, Rotom Fan, Zero Aura, Electros, and Mega Ampharos, I was never super confident in our ability to walk out without some casualties. I opened with Hitmonlee, hoping to fake out and low kick the opening hunk of metal. Unfortunately, due to all of this mon's shortcomings, a low kick failed to kill. But we outsped, right? Oh, we can to move first. It explodes. I lose my boy here. GG's. Double kick did not KO. Good riddance! Sludge Bomb did enough to Zero Aura, who came out next, and Seismitoad took on the ensuing Lantern. Hamilton checked Rotom Fan, and the Electros walked out. Random move, my options were to sack Breloom or risk Seismitoad on a switch. Effect Spore? Didn't get it. Three Effect Spores, didn't get one. This is T-Punch, right guys? Guaranteed T-Punch? I, I would rather lose Seismitoad than... I would rather, I would rather lose Seismitoad than anything else here. T-Punch? Yes! Okay, we have a chance, hold on. And finally, Mega Ampharos. This would have been easy, except Muddy Boy was paralyzed on the switch in from Dragon Breath. So again, random move. No, this Ampharos is bulky as shit. Arcanine can't touch it. Arcanine's rock slide is 33%, which is not enough. I'm doing it. I'm, I'm going for This out is really bad. This is the worst out I've ever seen. Okay. So 30% flinch chance with rock slide would give us the win. Or I could flip the coin that it might use discharge. If it doesn't use discharge, I lose two mons. I'm flipping the coin. I'm flipping it. Show me discharge. Discharge, please, 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 please. Yes! Middle fingers up, boys. Oh man. Frick you, Ampharos.
Easy, Deathless Watson. Deathless Watson was insane. I'm so glad we were able to take down the guy without losing anything. And now we get Businessman Robot Penguin. Let's go. The next route was the biker route. Was anyone going to tell me that I prepared for the wrong fight? And now I have to deal with a powerhouse unprepared? I smoked a gold duck with Ludicolo, but didn't have a prepared check to Dugong with freeze dry. Sure, Electros handled it, but... Then Kingdra stepped in. I dropped its speed with Tangling Hair as it double-edged, and I had to break out the ruler to try and kill it. This is 65%. Does that look about right? High horsepower kills if this is 65%. All right, here's the deal, guys. There is probably a 75% chance we kill. Um, there's also, if that doesn't work, there's a 75% chance that it kills me. No, I just, I, break, I, I high horsepower. And we just, we just kill here? Kill? Thank God. Okay, we're out. And then the demon, Bright Powder Swana. I think I just go. No, I, I I go I go here. That's fine. Oh, I got to move first. Don't crit me. Don't crit me. If I lose Pidgeot here, I'll be real sad. Oh my God, dude, that sucks, man. That sucks so bad. Is this thing no guard? Is it a no guard Swana? No, it's Keen Eye and Bright Powder. I love walking to the wrong trainer. That's so fun and also cool and interesting. I love, I love that. That specifically was awesome. I love awesome. That's so fun. This is such a fun game that I, wow. I'm really playing a really fun game right now. Electros finished the job and we were up to three total deaths in the run. Did Pidgeot and Seismitoad matter? I mean, kinda. I was out of bird types now and Seismitoad was a unique typing too, but no time for pity. We had the high speed cycling road to clear. And yeah, these battles were all thinkers, but the owner and operator of this stretch was CRR or cycling road rival. I was told it was a surefire death that everyone lets something go here. That this battle is a difficulty check that I needed to be ready for. Accept a loss or two and move on. But I just can't do that. Empoleon toyed with the opening in DD, brick breaking and locking the little dude onto reflect over and over. I was up 1 0. A pivot through Orbeetle into Electros on Sceptile let me sludge bomb the starter goat, making it 2 0. Baiting Solar Beam on Doom, Dreadnought finished it with a rock slide. You were up 3. I pivoted through Quillfish on Halucha to garner a few attack drops. After intimidating the bird enough, Orbeetle was able to survive an acrobatics, killing it with Psy Shock. 4 down. Kingdra was scary. I only had one full health Mon left and it was Gorbis. I just needed Psychic to do enough damage, which it nearly did. Breaking Swipe wouldn't kill us from here, of course, right? I mean, a crit punts me, but also, do I really care? It's Gorbis. It's Gorbis. Yeah. Good job, Gorbis. My final mon comes out. Gramble was the final guy on the team, and our team was beat. I did pack a poison barb on our quillfish that should have given us a 50-50 roll to kill. But is that the risk I should have taken? Then Gramble started spamming counter. I don't know what his issue was. I sludge bombed the dog as a player up to Electros and then Quillfish. And with a little chip damage, the puffer boy delivered the goods. CRR without any losses was huge. The run continues. And that was our peak. Our greatest hype for the run. All that came after that was like devastation and then sadness. Quillfish fell. And then, guys, the real, the real strat here is to click Fire Fang because then, then we win 20% of the time. Guys, this is the Giga Chad play, all right? Real ones click Fire Fang. I don't have another play. I like the, looking through my box, I or my my team right now i'm i'm in i'm in a corner so we click this fire fang is the only thing that guarantees we get through this because then i can swap into orbital and get the kill with bug buzz immediately after so it's not just a matter of sacking i don't have anything that can revenge kill this hammy you've carried this run you've been awesome you know i i understand that you're gonna give this your best and if it doesn't work out you know i can't you know, i can't blame that on you so hamilton the run is in your hands Was it for the greater good? Was it for the run? Or did it simply happen without purpose, without vengeance? Rest in pieces, Hamilton, our goat. Without Hammy, our road to Norman was harder and by a lot. Death number six came at the hands of no guard, bulk up, stone edge, dynamic punch, Machamp in daddy's gym. Orbeetle's role had played out. Gym number four, six deaths up to this point. Dad, you're going down. All right, Aura Sphere. 
I think it'll go for speed control. Oh, that's a good roll. That's a good roll. That's that's bad. That's really don't freeze me. If this freezes me, I'm I'm gonna be okay. That's I'll live with it. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Please kill. Thank you. Okay. Right, moving on. I was hoping we'd get out of there without taking any damage. Obviously, didn't work out. Okay, it does go digger's speed like I thought it would. Uh, and if I'm correct, this should be guaranteed earthquake, right? It's not. I don't have another play. I don't have another play. I don't have another play. Show me Earthquake, please. Ba ba. Ba ba. Ba ba. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. All right. This is, about get, this is about to get really interesting really fast. It has a roll to kill me, but I don't have another play. My plan here was always the gas or acid. We can, we can deal with it after this. I can have another month to take care of it. This is fine. Don't kill me. Don't crit. Don't crit. Don't kill. Don't crit. Thank you. Good hold. Nice job, buddy. What are the chances this is a quick attack? Really high, right? Roll the dice. Show me a quick attack. It went body slam. That sucks so bad. Okay, that's fine. Yep, now it's slower. So this is a quick attack here. Quick attack. Thank you. Of course, I'm crit, dude. That's a great poison. What a glorious poison. We should survive on one HP. I'm doing this. Took a quick attack. That did 18 damage. Don't crit. Thank you. Okay. Should be Azu. <laughs> Azu! Mm -hmm. I might just wipe here. This might be it. Go ahead, Relax on. Okay. So ugly. Breakfast. Nice. Good citrus berry. Great crit. Show me Zen headbutt. That's fine. Oh. Come on. Oh, come on. Abby's, you did not just chat back to back. We believe in you. And then LMAO told you. It's going close combat here. I don't have a choice. I just look I just look high horsepower. Um, there is a, like a 60% chance we just die here to close combat. I don't have it. Horse. Okay. Hit this, please. Please, 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 please. Please, please hit this, please. Thank God. Are we through? Good God, okay. All right. How many Pokemon can we get to one HP? How is this still deathless? Cause I'm fucking insane. All right, let's keep going. We're fine, we're fine, we're fine. Oh, uh, um. <laughs> That para really hurts, just so you know. I do think we're about to lose him on here. I I don't think so. Here's the thing: I need Empoleon to beat Sincino. I think Sincino just wipes my whole team. Even a crit wouldn't save me here.
Waterfall was not guaranteed to kill there. Okay. And you know what's really sad is I want to switch to Sincina or I want to switch to the horse here and get the speed drop, but nothing else speeds even after that. I need the poison touch here. Poison touch. Poison touch. Poison touch. Poison touch. Oh. Alright, well it was fun. I sag Rano here. There's actually no need to sag Rano here. Speed drop doesn't matter. That was a necessary sack. Because I don't have any fake outs either. I only have a sucker punch. Does sucker punch matter? Sucker punch would do 25%. No, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Show me another one! Show me the para. Para. <laughs> Sucker into poison. We have a chance, boys. Crit into poison. You need the poison. Screw you for going rock blast. Insult to injury. GG's. Throw the whole run away. Yeah, that's where we're at. 